G'day scientists, I'm going to review these top volcano eruption toys. Extreme Earth Volcano, a Smithsonian Volcano tank review. This is the volcano lamp Aldi purchase and the National Geographic volcano set. I picked all three of these up during my Aldi special buy mega shop. As usual, I'm going to be rating them on fun, price, and what you learn while you're playing them. Then I'll let you know whether I think you should buy them. First up, Extreme Earth by Curious Universe. Cost me $16.99 from Aldi. It looks like a lot of experiments and activities are included. Inside you can see parts of the volcano that I'm going to build and the book here which has a lot of pictures and is pretty thick. Okay, let's open this up. Inside, a plastic case holding everything together with some tape securing it all in place. Right, we got the volcano itself, which is a cardboard cone. Then we got two sachets of eruption powders, four, I think, wax crayons, which are probably not for the volcano, a pH chart, which goes with these pH testing strips, a test tube with screw lid, a Petri dish, and inside some glitter powder. Then we got a compass, some bouncy balls. <laughs> They're pretty bouncy some red food coloring and a magnet. Some more bouncy balls, welcome back. Some string and some cotton buds. Let's check the book out and find the volcano instructions. This book looks pretty good. Lots of experiments for different kind of earth type things, weather and bacteria, more rainbows, tornadoes, static electricity. It's got it all in here. All right, here are the instructions for the volcano. Okay, let's separate out the things that we need just for the volcano. The cone and test tube, the two eruption powders, the red food color, that's all. You can see there's lots of other things for the other experiments. We also need some sticky tape for this and that's to hold the volcano once the tabs are in place. Next we take the lid off the test tube and place it into the top of the volcano delicately but securely. Then we add two tablespoons of one of the powders to the volcano. I reckon that's almost this whole sachet. I'm gonna dump it all in here. What do you reckon? Will that make it a huge explosion? Oh, I hope so. Next, we take the second sachet and mix it into water. Again, it says only a few tablespoons, but I'm gonna put it all in. And the same with the food color. Who cares? Let's throw all that in too. I hope this is going to be a massive explosion. Right, this next step is to make the eruption happen. I'm gonna move this onto the tray so it doesn't get all messy. Then I'm gonna bring my phone in to take another camera angle so you get to see the eruption really close up. Okay, here we go, let's pour it in. There it goes, it's bubbling up and erupting down the side of the volcano, whoosh! I'm glad I got a tray for this.
I put so much powder in here that it keeps on erupting and erupting. I think probably following the instructions would be better. Then you would get lots of goes of erupting. This kit is amazing value for money. At just $16.99, you get a lot of experiments. The volcano was pretty good and has some good eruption action going on. The book had lots to read about volcanoes and all the other natural earth topics, including weather, which you scientists know is a favorite topic of mine. I'm gonna give the Extreme Earth Kit from Curious Universe three stars for fun, three stars for price, and three stars for learning. Bye or bye-bye? It's a bye. Okay, next up is the Smithsonian Volcano Tank Lamp thing. I got this from Audi for $19.99. It needs three AA batteries, which I have here. Let's open it up. I have to say straight up, I think this is going to be a dud. It's just a lamp. Once we put it together and switch it on, then what? Also, what, what are you gonna learn from it? Anyway, let's stay open-minded and check it out. Okay, here's the lamp itself. It's very solid. The batteries go in the bottom, but you also need a screwdriver to open it up. Here are the little volcano lava beads that will simulate the eruption. There's a tiny poster inside which teaches you a bit about volcanoes. And there isn't even a picture of a real volcano here. On the back are the instructions, so let's give it a go. Okay, unscrew the battery compartment underneath the volcano lamp and the battery flap pops open like this. Then I insert three AA batteries in that normal crisscross pattern. Then the flap goes back on the compartment and the screw pops in to hold it securely. Next, the top of the volcano lamp comes off and reveals this rubber seal, which also pops off. Then we fill almost to the top with tap water, leaving a one centimeter gap. Then the instructions say to add two drops of washing up liquid and it's really specific saying that if we don't do this, it won't work. Next, we pop in the lava beads, replace the rubber seal and pop on the lid of the volcano. That's it, it didn't take very long, not very exciting so far. Let's switch it on and see what happens. I'm gonna bring my phone in again for a better camera angle for you. Ah, it's actually pretty cool. I'm loving it. The volcano lights up red, the beads are flying up and then falling down. It's not just pretty cool, it's awesome and I love it. While you watch this beautiful eruption, why not like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you can be notified when my next video drops. Well, I have to say shocked. I really expected this to be a bit rubbish. I mean, it's just a lamp. Let's face it though, you're not gonna learn too much either building this or using it. But the build quality is good and the lamp is beautiful. I'm gonna give the Smithsonian Volcano Tank two stars for fun, two stars for price, and one star for learning. Bye or bye-bye? I hate myself for saying this, but it's a bye. It's too beautiful to pass up. Next, we got the National Geographic Build Your Own Volcano Kit, $14.99 from Audi. It's got some genuine volcano specimens inside. So far, I've been quite unimpressed by the National Geographic kits. They've been very poor, too fast, and very light on the learning. Let's open this up and see if it's any different. Okay, inside we got the mold to make the volcano. It comes in four parts, three sides and the top, and a band to help hold it in place. We've got the bag of plaster, the instruction manual here. Again, separate from the main book, it seems weird doing that. The main book, which just like the other kits from National Geographic, short and dull. Here we've got the two volcano specimens, then some paints and one of the eruption powders. a scraper and a very bent paintbrush. Then the second eruption powder, 
There's nothing else left in the box. Let's check those volcano samples out. One is heavier than the other. I think this heavier one is supposed to be obsidian, but it doesn't look very black. Let me know in the comments if you think it is or if you think it's something else. Next, we've got the pumice stone. I remember this well, it's very light. And despite looking like a stone or piece of rock, it feels light as air. Let's get rid of the things we don't need right now. First step is to make the volcano using the mold and the plaster. We assemble the volcano mold like this and it clicks together. Then we use the elastic band to hold it all roughly in place. Then we're going to take the plaster and pour it into a container that we do not need to keep. This is an old delivery container that my dinner came in last night. Once the plaster is in, we add a cup of water slowly, mixing it until the plaster is thick and just pourable. It takes about a minute to complete this step. It's pretty messy this step, so please make sure you're doing this in a space that is easy to clean up. Once it's all been mixed together, I'll leave it to sit for another minute, just to make sure that all the plaster has been absorbed. Then final step is to pour it into the mold and leave to set for 45 minutes. I'm just going to smooth the surface out a bit because this is going to be the bottom of the volcano and I want it to stand up nicely. Okay, I've left it for 45 minutes now and it's time to take the mold off. Ah, it comes off nicely and it's starting to look like a volcano. I can see why they said to do this in a disposable tub. I don't fancy cleaning this up. Then I use the scraper to tidy up the rough parts of the volcano where little bits have been left off from the mold itself. Here it is all nicely tidied up. The instructions say to leave to dry thoroughly for one day. I don't have time for that. So alternatively, you can dry it out in the oven at 93 degrees Celsius for one to two hours. I'm gonna do that instead. Okay, two hours later and I've left it to cool down too and it's much drier than it was before. I'm gonna bring the tray in for the painting as this will get messy. The paints are sealed at the top so we need some scissors to snip the ends off. Once I've done that, I put the lids back on but I can see already that these lids are not airtight. You're not gonna be able to use a little piece of this paint and then use it again later. I'm gonna start with the yellow and build up the darker colors. The good news about the volcano is that it's pretty messy in real life. That's just as well because I'm a scientist and not an artist. The brush is pretty useless, so I'll use it to fill in the holes, but mostly just dab the paint on from the tube direct. The brush is pretty useless, so I'll use it to fill in the holes, but mostly just dab the paint on from the tube directly. If it dribbles a little, I think that's great because it will look more like a volcano. There's three rivers of lava coming down from the volcano mouth. So I'll do those first in yellow. Next, I'm going to add big splodges of red paint on the top of the yellow and let it dribble down the sides. I'm hoping that this natural effect will really look like flowing lava. Let's add more and really get it dribbling down the side of the volcano. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Next, I'm gonna use the brush and this black gray paint to fill in all the gaps in the volcano. If I'm brushing over a bit of the lava, it doesn't matter. This is nature and I think this rough approach will make it look really good. There we go, I finished it. It's looking awesome. Next step is to let the paint dry completely before we move on to the eruption. Right, it's completely dry now and looks awesome. This time I'm gonna kind of follow the instructions. Gonna add half a tablespoon of the first powder, then half a tablespoon of the second powder. Then add two drops of washing up liquid. Then I'm going to bring in the phone to get a close up video for you.
And now I pour in the water into the top. Oh wow, pretty good, it's bubbling up and flowing red. It looks like a volcano. The lava is flowing down the sides. I think if I'd stirred the powders up a little before adding the water, it might have been better. Let's give that a go now. Ah, oh, yeah, now we're talking. So much better. This looks awesome. <laughs> Look at this mess though. Wow, National Geographic, not bad. Certainly much better than that Dino Dig Kit we did in a recent video. This kit is cool. It combines together craft and science. I enjoyed making the kit from the mold and the plaster and it came out nice, even though I'm not very creative. The book, just like the last National Geographic one, is pretty poor. You're not gonna learn very much from it. I'm gonna give the National Geographic Build Your Own Volcano Kit three stars for fun, two stars for price, and one star for learning. Bye, or bye bye? It's a bye. The learning is poor, but the variety of activity and the fact you can use it again means this snuck through. Three kits and three buys, this must be some kind of record. I really love this video, so if you haven't seen it yet, sit back and check it out.